the Gift Wrapping Training Academy. And you've often seen me create videos and you know I always use beautiful papers and some the really key for me is that I use leftover materials and leftover paper to create beautiful gift wrapping. But today I have a twist to my gift wrapping. I have a guest today and uh, she's not just my guest, she's a lovely, lovely friend. And um, she's going to show us how we can create a beautiful bottle sleeve. So it's going to be a wrapped bottle sleeve from materials. So before I introduce it to Jenny, I'm going to um, show you the products that you need to create this beautiful bottle wrap sleeve. So let's start off with what you need for your bottle wrap sleeve. So what I have here, I have some pins in this little beautiful pin cushion that Jenny's made herself. Some needle and thread, obviously a measuring tape. As you know, seamstresses and tailors, tailors they need um, measuring tapes. I don't use one, but today we're going to use a measuring tape. We have a pair of scissors. Now this is for material. So we don't want to cut the card or the paper with this. And just a marker pen um, that Jenny's going to be using. A normal pen, I have a piece of card to cut out the template for the bottle wrap and we have scissors and the scissors are just a normal paper cutting scissors. I have my bottle here and I'm going to be using some satin ribbon and this is where the twist comes into play. We have loads of materials, I have loads of material left over so today I thought what we'll do is we'll sew something together and um, so we have an array of materials and I've actually chosen this one. I love the colours on it, the pinks, the cerise, and I think it's going to really complement the bottle when we create the bag for it. So let me introduce you to Jenny, Jenny Taylor. Hello. Uh, oh, it's so good to see it's you. It's good to see you too. Yeah. So Jenny, um, before we move on to this fantastic project that we've been thinking about creating for a long time. Long time. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? <laughs> People might, my audience are going to want to know. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? So well, I'm Jennifer Taylor yeah. and I was a contestant on Great British Sewing V number two. Oh, um, so that's that not BBC two. Yeah, BBC two. So that was uh, not this year but the year before. Um, I was one away from the quarterfinals, which was really, really upsetting, but. Um, I've then gone on to start working, uh, doing workshops, been doing some bits for Create Craft TV, been doing some um, actual talks as well for like the NEC and um, CHA UK. So yeah. things are really starting to, to sort of build some momentum, which is fantastic. Yeah. And meeting you love yourself, of course. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it's great because um, I, I think I was the first gift wrapping expert on Create Craft TV, I think back in 2013. Wow. <laughs> so, so nearly two years ago, know, wow, yeah. I don't know where the years ago is. <laughs> and um, tell me a little bit more about your show on Create and Craft TV, what, what, what are you doing on the show? Okay, so with um, So Fabulous, um, I'm basically there to help give the viewers some new ideas um, to sewing. So I haven't yeah. got any products or anything like that that I sell yeah. specifically, so I'm not there selling my products. I don't yeah. have products, but what I do like to think I do is sell ideas. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that I will help inspire people who are watching the show who may normally paper craft or, I don't know, do cross stitch, lean over to the sewing side, the dark side. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. because you run, what's it called, the sewing revolution? Yeah, the Have sewing revolution. That? So the sewing revolution started when I received emails from um, two children that actually tracked me down on the internet. Oh and um, basically said how much I'd inspired them on the show and that they were making things and they sent me pictures and I knew I wanted to do something with the experience that I gained being on the show and obviously sewing became such an addiction, I like to use that word because I can't describe it in any other way, I can't stop sewing but the main thing for me is I wanted to get other people as inspired and geared up around sewing as I am um, and therefore I made the decision to start running workshops but mm. what I want to really do is get people into sewing through not by going out and spending lots and lots of money very similar mm. to yourself Neelam where use what you have you yeah. don't need to go out and spend thousands and thousands of pounds on sewing machines and equipment and materials mm. you have things at home already i'm pretty sure everybody has a needle and thread and yes. if you haven't you can pick it up in a supermarket mm. anyway 
and a pair of scissors, that's all you need. You can take the clothes you're wearing now and make them into something new. So yeah. don't be afraid to take things that you would normally throw out because it's got a hole in or take to the charity shop. Don't. Hold on to it. Because we can make something new like today with these beautiful yeah. saris. So yeah, yeah I'm really excited yeah. about our little project. Fabulous. So what I thought we'd do today mm -hmm. is, um, as you know, I'm one of the leading gift wrapping experts in the UK and um, just like yourself, it's showcasing your expertise. It's about yeah. nurturing your creativity because mm -hmm. I'm so determined and so inspired by all these creatives that I meet throughout my business and throughout my life and the key is that you nurture your creativity because when you nurture your creativity as you know Jenny it just takes you and opens up so many doors it does and I, and I have this conversation a lot where I, I do think that creativity helps to give you confidence um, believe it or not I'm not a very confident person but through craft I'm able to to be confident to yeah. be myself and yeah, I, I do think it's a vehicle of health. I can't, I can't put it in any other way, really. I so yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Do not think it just mm -hmm. it, it has so many more powers than just making beautiful things. Mm -hmm. it, it can lead to happiness and, and get people through some really dark times as well. Through my workshops, I've noticed that it almost comes to be some kind of therapy session, you know, yeah. where people feel that they're able to open out and talk about things that they wouldn't necessarily be able to talk about in any other normal circumstances mm -hmm. and it's a safe environment and I think craft is a wonderful vehicle for that so yeah great so what we'll do is we'll we'll show everybody how to make a beautiful wrap oh I can't bottle wait bottle wrap sleeve I oh, know yeah <laughs> we keep it yeah bottle wrap sleeve yeah wrapped bottle sleeve yeah either way it's going to be a beautiful gift item um yeah. which is going to come this wonderful bottle of carbon yeah. which we'll be opening after great and we'll, we'll do some more chatting as we go along yeah that'd be great and talk talk about your workshops and other things that you're involved wonderful. in wonderful great okay. okay fabulous great Okay then, so before we get starting on this beautiful, wonderful fabric, uh, we're going to need to take a few measurements first. So if you can take your piece of paper, your pen, and you're also going to need your tape measure. Um, so first of all, if you can just take your, your bottle of choice and just place that on the paper. What we're going to be doing is actually just tracing the base of your bottle, um, just to make sure that it does actually get into our sleeve. So all I'm going to be literally doing is taking the pen, and tracing it around the bottom. Now this doesn't have to be perfect guys, it's just to get a rough measurement of how big our bottle is. So there you go. So I'm just going to make a little note that that's the, the base. Okay. And then what we're going to want to do, obviously because we're going to be sewing, we need to make sure that we're adding a seam allowance here, because obviously if we don't we'll be making this too small. So I'd add roughly about a centimetre, which is roughly about that big. I mean, you can measure this out if you want, but again, we're not going for perfection here, guys. So taking your paper scissors, not your fabric scissors, just quickly cut around that. There you go. So as you can see there, it's very roughly cut out. Like I say, we're not going for perfection here, but it just gives me what I need when I start to put it onto the fabric as a pattern. The next measurement you're going to need to take is how tall your bottle is, because um, obviously we don't want it to be poking out the top of our sleeve. So I'm literally just going to be taking a quick measurement. So you can see here that we're looking at 13 inches, which is also 33 centimetres if you prefer to work in centimetres. So I'm just going to make a quick note of that measurement. So if I just make a quick arrow there, and that was 13 inches. And then the final measurement which we're going to need to take is actually the circumference of our bottle. So actually let's just bring that back in, it makes it a little bit more easier. So what we're going to do is just take that around. So again you can see there that's 11 inches or 28 centimetres. So what I want to do is just quickly walk you through the mask before we go any further. Okay, so the height of your bottle here wouldn't include any um, seam allowances, so you're definitely going to need to add one inch onto that. And the same with the circumference of your bottle, you're going to need to add another seam allowance on that, but I'm actually going to make this just a little bit more bigger, so I'm going to actually add two inches onto that. 
just keep a, a note of those measurements because you're going to need those later. And then we're moving on to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to use our um, measurements and paper patterns with our fabric. So I'm just going to open this out. It's gorgeous fabric. So this is a lovely organza and it almost has like a velour print on it, which is obviously I think why Neelam's decided to pick this beautiful cerise fabric. Um, but this is going to be perfect and it obviously complements the, um, the bottle as well. So you might want to think about that when you're choosing your fabric. But obviously if it's the bits that you have hanging around, I'm sure it will work perfectly. So the first thing we want to do is measure our um, circumference of the bottle, which is uh, the last measurements that we took. Um, so this was, let's just get that piece of paper up. So this is the, the 13 inches with the 1 inch seam allowance and then the same again with the circumference, the 11 plus the 2. Um, so let's do the 11 one first. So this is actually going round the body of the bottle. So let's just quickly make that measurement. So obviously you're going to need a pen to make some marks here. Now obviously this is the salvage edge, so this is going to be nice and straight anyway. So if we just make it start button there, because you can see that it's slightly wavy there, so we don't want that wavy edge. And we're going with 14. So that was the, um, sorry, 13. There you go. So there's one, two. And then the next measurement is going to be the height of the bottle. Now we said no shorter than 14 inches, which is the... 13 inches at the bottom plus a seam allowance. But because of the design that we're going with today, I'm going to be adding an extra bit. So now I can see that I've got about 20 inches worth of fabric. Um, so I'm actually quite happy with that. Um, so I'm going to leave that length on the fabric. So I'm just going to literally cut that out. Obviously, you can vary the, the length as well. As long as it's no shorter than the 14 inches, you don't want to be seeing the tops of your bottle. So just pick that out. And you can see that I'm not being super precise about this. As long as you've got a rough rectangle, it will all come out in the wash. Okay. So there's the first piece all cut out. The next one we're going to do is the base, which is the paper pattern that we did earlier. Now, I'm going to be a little bit more fancy with this because I really like the, um, the detail of the flowers. So I'm going to make sure that's in the middle of my base. Not that you'll see it very often, but if they were to look, there'd be a little detail there. So I'm just going to pick that one. That one looks quite a nice size. So again, I'm just going to quickly chase around this. You know that it fits because you did all of your measuring beforehand. And again, using your fabric scissors, just quickly cut that out. There's the base of your bottle, and this is what's going to be wrapping around your bottle. Okay, so let's get on with the um, construction. So, um, just move your lovely plumage out of the way. <laughs> so, you're going to just need your, your rectangle piece and your circular base piece for this next step. Um, so, the first thing we want, we want to do is really get rid of this, this salvage edge here, Neelam. So, um, I'm just going to quickly fold that over. And if you do have some pins, it might be a little bit easier just to quickly pop some in there to keep it in place. Um, so, obviously, as I said earlier, if you have got a sewing machine, then by all means, you can quickly whiz this up on that. But if you haven't, you don't need it. So, I'm just taking a, a normal needle and thread. I've managed to have a little lovely pink colour so it matches. But if it, all you have is white or black, I'm sure that'll be fine because you're not going to necessarily see it anyway. And you know that's the key about crafting. Sometimes people be, want to be so perfect at doing creative craft. You, I always say I use whatever I have, whether it's yeah. a matching ribbon or not, because it always looks different. It does, yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously we could even go to town here where I'm actually sewing a cross, but we could actually sew in some ribbons. So I don't know if you yeah. want to do that while we're here. Which ribbon did you go for in the end? Well, I was going to use the bottle green. I thought, oh, let's, do that that let's, let's add it on. Let's do it. Well, in that case, then, I might actually change my thread colour. 
Mm -hmm. So we won't see the threads at all. So how did you get into sewing? How did I get into sewing? Mm -hmm. It was a wedding dress. Okay. A wedding dress got me into sewing. I was looking for my perfect wedding dress and I couldn't find one. So mm -hmm. I decided to make one myself. Mm -hmm. Problem is, I hadn't picked up a sewing machine before. Wow. And yeah. um, so it was a scary uh, situation. Yeah. But um, a very much a rewarding one. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I've literally got a little green dress. That's good. Um, so you made your own wedding dress? Made my own wedding dress from scratch, so I went out and bought my own fabric. I actually made my own lace, which you'll be pleased to hear is made out of paper. Oh, fancy, yeah. Uh, using a technique called paper lamination, mm -hmm. um, where you basically screen print with um, fabric glue rather than fabric paint. And then you submerge your um, fabric into water and basically scrub all the paper off. Mm. So you have these really delicate paper fibres, almost kind of like this really, yeah, yeah. and it's actually on organza. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I did my own um, pattern and made my own dress and it was very much the handmade wedding I always wanted. So do you have your dress online? Uh, you know, we can put a link at the end of this video. Yeah, you, you can, can see my, um, yeah. you can see it online, but um, it's actually also in a book. Oh, is it? Yeah, um, a lady called Inika Berlin, mm -hmm. um, she's a textile artist, mm -hmm. and because of the uh, technique that we used, yeah. um, it actually made an appearance in her book, so my oh, book really? in a book. Brilliant. So brilliant. all I'm actually doing now, as you can see, is sort of tacking these all together, so you know that it's in the right place because you've pinned in place, mm -hmm. you can see there, pinned in place, but I'm also tacking through the um, ribbon as well, so I'm, I'm just basically doing a very quick stitch. So. I'm making these as small as I can on the outside, mm. but you don't have to make them very close to the other side, so you can go quite wide. Now that's a great tip because when, when I, I, obviously my daughters have grown up now, mm -hmm. but you know, my younger daughter was, her trousers, the school trousers always used to be long because she was a little bit bigger on the waist, and I yeah. was always hemming the trousers. But I could never figure out how to make the stitch on the outside small, so she always had this big massive stitch <laughs> on the outside. Well, yeah, I mean, this is all you're doing is just you, this is basically, in a way, your hem trousers, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, so this is this will be fine for um, this technique I'm using here to, to hem trousers. And um, there is another way of doing it. Um, oh, I won't show you that today. Though. That's another show. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can see these are really, really small. You can hardly see. Um, the thread marks here but obviously if you're using a if you've gone out to town on this like for instance if it's for wedding gifts you know you wouldn't scrimp on those kind of things would yeah, you yeah. Um, so this would be the one occasion you might go out and spend a bit of money but if you you get matching thread then you will not see these at, at all, all yeah. and then again you just touched upon you know people let's say for example if somebody's getting married and they want to create some nice little favour bags they could use this technique from oh there. gosh yeah I mean it's just it's completely universal I mean especially with this organza it's so beautiful um you know it wouldn't take two seconds to sew a little bag up I mean we'll show you within this little demo here mm. how quickly it all come together I mean obviously because I'm hand sewing it may take a little bit longer mm. um but you know with this is a big size bottle isn't it whereas if you're yeah. making little favoured bags then you know they're, they're no size at all are they so I often talk about nurturing one's creativity mm -hmm. and um, I truly believe when, when I gave up, I was working as a specialist lecturer with deaf undergraduate students in university and um, I knew there was something bigger and there's something that I wanted to do and I used to often draw when I was younger mm -hmm. and um, but you know parents tell you you need to go to school, you need to have, get an education yes, and what I found is my daughter um, a couple of years ago was doing her GCSE exams and her tutors wanted her to choose triple science, triple this, triple that but give up her art. Academics. That's it and I went in to see the, uh, the teachers and I said look I would rather she did her art because she needs to balance both her left and right brain. Yeah. And because she stayed with the art subject, she did very well in art. She used to do the art first, then the academic subjects. And yeah. I truly believe that because she balanced what she was doing in both creative and academic mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. she was able to get all her GCSEs. What What are your thoughts on people nurturing their creativity? I'm, I'm all for it. Um, well... As a, as a child, I was very academic. I took my maths early, uh, mm -hmm. two years early, in fact. Yeah. Um, but I was really involved in um, sport, mm -hmm. dance, music, 
um, I did my degree in dance and visual arts mm. um, and I think it's really important that people have um, the option to become creative even if you wouldn't necessarily see yourself as a creative mm. person mm. Um, but I also think um, there's a book that my husband actually um, talks about called his name's Kirk by the way um, <coughs> called uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and it's basically a book that goes on to two different people. He's a school teacher. Yeah. So um, there's a book that my husband um, often talks about called um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And it sounds a bit strange, <laughs> but bear with me. Basically, it's a lecturer or a teacher, and he's faced with two types of students. And you've got the students that are very, very good academically, you know, always score really high, mm. whereas you've got your other kids who are disruptive, um, and don't get very good grades. Mm. However, when it comes to things like science, for instance, they could give you know all the mathematics equations to the kids that were academic and they could get top marks straight mm. away. But if you ask those same kids to deconstruct a motorcycle, I think mm. they couldn't do it, even yeah. though you're applying the same science. Yeah. Where the kids that were disruptive and didn't get the maths could strip that engine quicker than you could click your fingers. Yeah. And he was trying to get the idea of quality and what is quality? How do you define quality? Just yeah. because you can get a A star in math doesn't mean you can't apply maths. maths. And, and I think with creativity, you know, you might just think, oh, it's only sewing, but or it's only gift wrapping, but you're actually using mathematics, trigonometry. God yes. knows what you're using yeah. in, in that craft. So, you know... Don't be too quick to dismiss your arts because you, mm. I, f I firmly believe that you can teach your academic subjects through artistic skills. Definitely. Um, so that's my piece on it. So, yeah, I do. Not only do I think it's, it's a great stress reliever, mm. you know, if you, like I said before, you don't have to be a crafter to be arty. Mm. Um, you can be arty and be a crafter. You know, it, it, comes, it lends itself to each other. But I do think it gives you some stress relief time and also just helps energise your brain, like you say, left and right hand side, Often. and you can still learn, you can still get your marks in your academic stuff, but you're just applying it in a different way. Yeah, and um, just very quickly, um, in schools, you know, the, the home economics, sewing, bring it back, bring it back, bring it I back, bring it back, bring it back, and I love, yeah, we're, we're, we're <laughs> sewing revolution, <laughs> please bring it back, if anybody wants me to come into their schools and teach sewing, call me, seriously, yeah. I, I'm so passionate about mm -hmm. it. I mean, touching on exactly what you're on, you, the amount of people I know that don't know how to sew a button on, yeah. and, and, and it's not a laughing matter, like, you think, oh, and it's like, the, probably your gut reaction would be to laugh, but it's like, that is really quite sad, so your, your cardigan, for instance, or your coat, your button would fall off and you'd throw it away, a yeah. perfectly good coat. I'll teach you how to sew the button on, honestly, we can do this, together we can do this, so I think it's very, very important that they bring back these, their life skills, they really are, yeah. they really are. And you know, just touching, touching upon that, I was watching the news yesterday, and I don't mm. often watch the news, and there was a, uh, an interview with a school, and the teacher was saying that the children in infant schools and primary schools don't actually know that potatoes came from the ground. They actually grew on trees. No. So they were taking them to the zoo. But again, that's hands-on. It's touching. Of course, it's feeling. It's feeling and it's understanding. Like, the, like you say, the whole food chain and the yeah. fact that the cows in the field or what are on your plate currently, you know, yeah. and all of that. And they, they've got no concept. And it's not because they're they're idiots and, and, and they don't understand. It's because they're not being shown. And, exactly. you know, it, and it's just it's simple little things like threading a needle you know it's not complicated guys I can show you don't be afraid to pick it up yeah. and if anybody's thinking well you know picking up a needle and sewing it's a woman's job it definitely no. is no I left a, a very successful career to start gift wrapping and I'll be honest with you it was my laughable idea because people laughed at me but I built a great business from me, and I'm I'm so happy doing what I do every day. I can get up and make a bowl. And I'm sure every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so well, exactly. Like most people are, you know, stuck in their office jobs. Whereas what am I doing today? I'm making a Brilliant. wonderful bottle of grass bag thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's going to be great. Great. So let's yeah. we keep talking. We we're never going to yeah. get through it. So let's let's concentrate on this. So I've already just quickly show you there. I've already sewn it on. So there's the back, all messy. But the front looks wonderful so we're going to move on to the next step now okay so we're on to our next step now so um i've just changed my thread from the green to the pink now because i'm actually going to be sewing the body of the, the sleeve Whoop, before my cotton runs away and um, so while we're on the subject of sewing just so you know i've threaded my needle 
and I've actually doubled that over twice. Okay, so can you see that? I know it's a bit difficult on the uh, the black. There you go. So you can see I've got two threads on my needle, and I'm literally putting the two threads together at the very end. So this gives me a nice strong thread, and then I'm just going to be making a knot at the very end, like so. Okay. There you go. You can sew most things with that. So because this is the top of our bag, I'm going to start there. So I've put my right sides together. So this is the right side and that's the wrong side. And you can see that's probably a little bit dull, whereas this has got the texture on it. So those are your right sides. So that's very important. So now with those together, I'm just going to put these through the loops there just to hide my knot. And then all I'm going to be doing is doing a quick running stitch. Now bearing in mind this isn't clothing here, so it doesn't need to be, you know, perfectly exact. You're not going to be wearing this. Obviously this kind of running stitch here you would not use on clothing unless you were just tacking it in place. You wouldn't be able to wear this bag. <laughs> um, but it would be enough for us to um, make our sleeve with. So you can see that I'm just putting the needle in the fabric and pushing it out through the other side, probably no more than half a centimetre. And you know, just looking at your, it actually looks like a sleeve as well, that you know, like you can wear <laughs> yeah. it a nice ribbon on the end. Just exactly. give me some ideas. Is it? Oh good. <laughs> so I'm taking this nice and slowly, even though I'm not in my thread up, am I? There you go. Or if you want to be super quick, what you could do is put this into the fabric and then just keep going along like so. Because of the, um, the velour, it might be a little bit difficult to do that on that, but if you weren't using this type of fabric and just using a plain organza with no detail on, there would be nothing stopping you doing the quick version. It's only because it's a little bit tough getting through that, that quite heavy velour. So you can see I'm halfway through already. So you can see the, the line of stitching that I've got there. So I'm making sure that I'm, I'm giving myself a bit of seam allowance. We talked about that earlier. Remember we said we needed to add the one on. So this is about half a centimetre, I think. So what sort of products are you working on? I know you do classes. Tell me a little bit about your classes whilst you're... Whilst I'm doing my sewing. sewing. <laughs> so um, my sewing revolution classes, I run quite regularly in the West Midlands area because I'm a West Brom girl. Mm -hmm. Um, although I am branching out to other areas as well, so um, feel free to check out my websites for any... What is your uh, website? So my website is jennifertaylor.co.uk, so that's Jennifer, double N-I-double-F by the way, and um, some people just spell it with the one F and can't find me, and Taylor is with a Y, um, but I'm sure I can give you the link later. Yeah. Um, and all my workshops will be listed on there, um, but... My workshops, generally speaking, are what I call sewing clinic workshops, where we don't really know what we're doing. It sounds a bit, I'm going to pay money and I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but that's the kind of point of it. It's all based around upcycling. So the reason why there isn't generally a theme there, like normally you'd go to a workshop and go, and today we're going to make a lampshade, for instance. And mm. um, Mine are very loose, and it's almost like a little sewing bee challenge, because I never know what people are going to bring. So I invite people to bring their, their leftover fabric, their clothes that they no longer want, bits from charity shops, it doesn't matter. Bring it along with maybe some ideas, like I want to make a coat, I want to make a skirt, or whatever, and on the day, I'll look at what you've got, and see what I can do with it. So what's great about my workshops is, is that you want, you've come along, let's just say you come to one of my workshops, Neela, and you want to make a coat. But when you walk out of my workshop, not only will you know how to make a coat, but if somebody else is making a skirt, if someone's making a bag, you will walk away with more than just your item. Yeah. So you might not have made the bag or the skirt, but you'll know how to do it by looking at other people. Yeah. So there you go, there's our sleeve done. So you can see that's all lovely and sewn now. So now we need to attach our circle base to the end of our bag. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're on to our, our next step where we're putting the base of our bottle onto our sleeve. So you can see that we've got it all in now. It's very lovely. Um, so again, you want to keep your right sides together. And in order to make this fit into here evenly, I'm just going to show you a quick tip. So you're going to need to have your scissors to hand. Um, so let's work on the sleeve first. So at the moment it's, it's laid quite flat with your um, stitched edge here. So I want you to make just a quick nip 
in that corner there. So there's your first knit. Now what I want you to do then do is bring those together. So you're bringing your seam together along with your notch there. And you're going to repeat that process. So you're going to add a notch here and there. So again, little snip. Doesn't have to be massive. Just so you know that you've got four even quarters. We're then going to repeat that again on our circular piece. So let's just fold that in half. And again, just add a little notch. There you go. And then you're going to do the same again here and there. So you can see I've already done it. So you've got one, two, three, four even notches. So now you're ready to then attach this to your sleeve. So you're going to need to get some pins. So again, keeping the same rule as right sides together, this needs to go that way in. And you're going to be matching up your notches. So let's go with the seam side first with one of the notches on your circle base. If you just pop that in like that. And then just add a pin. Follow it round. And again, you've got that notch there. And then you've got your other notch on your circle again. Make sure that that's in there. And again, just pin. Following it around again. There's your third notch. And pin. And then your final one. There's the notch on there, there's the notch on there. And pin. So now you can see that our base is evenly distributed from the sleeve and the base. Okay, so now we're ready to do some stitching. So similar to the running stitch, we're going to be doing a stitch called a back stitch. Now this basically means that you're just coming back on yourself. So let me just show you what I mean. So if we go in from where we first started sewing, so obviously you're going to go into the fabric and out like we did down the length of our sleeve. And then you're just going to go forward one. But then you're going to come back up through the hole. So you can see there. You're going to go through. And then back in through the hole you've just come. So you're basically sewing it twice. Because obviously this is the base of your bag. So you want this to be strong. You don't want your bottle falling out. <laughs> as you're about to present it to your, your guest or whatever. So I'm just going to quickly continue this back stitch all the way around the base of my bottle sleeve. So then we're ready to get on to adding some embellishments. Okay, so I've okay, so I've finished um, my stitches now and I've taken my thread off, which is great. Um, and now I'm ready to remove my pins, knowing that obviously it's all been distributed evenly on the base of my bag. So let's just move that out of the way. So we're ready to pull that through now. So it's almost like a pillowcase when you've done your washing. Just need to pull it through the other side. And there you have it. There we have our bottle sleeve ready to be adding embellishments. Okay, so now Jenny has finished the sleeve. She's, she's sewn all the sleeve and she's put the beautiful satin bottle green ribbon on the top end. So that's going to look really nice and ruffle it at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beautiful flower and I'm going to use some of the leftover material from um, our project and I'm going to use some tissue paper. And I've been told that I have to do some sewing so I am going to do some sewing um, in this video for you. So all I've done here is, let me just show you, I just have a piece of the material and it, it doesn't, it, I would probably say that's about eight inches wide. And um, I'm, I just want to just use it up so it doesn't matter if it's really long or if it's really, sh you, don't, you don't want it too short because we need to make a flower out of it. And I also have a piece of tissue paper. And what I'm going to do with the tissue paper is I'm actually going to fold the tissue paper in half. Like so. 
and then I'm just going to just gently fun make just pleat it back and forth. So I want to add, I want to add a bit of element of um, wrapping materials and paper to a bottle wrapped bottle sleeves. Okay, so once you get to this stage, so you can see that I've folded it also some little folds everywhere. Okay. First thing I need to do is then just make a cut all the way across the bottom. Okay. So you have some pleats here and you have folds here and you have folds there. So it doesn't really matter which end. So what I'm going to do is just start to cut um a nice flower shape, so just oval shapes all the way across to the bottom. So I just keep cutting. And I'm not being precise, I'm not looking for, you know, the exact shape and size of the curve either. So let's just move this paper out of the way. So now you just have like a nice scalloped edged tissue paper. So what I need to do now is I need to thread and just make a, a stitch all the way at, uh, along the base. So I I have some needle and th uh, some thread and I have a needle here and just make sure that you have enough thread to go all the way down to the bottom because if you run out of thread halfway we are not going to be able to make the ruffles so just take your first piece of thread and just sew through so all we're looking for is just a a long stitch Pull the, the thread through. So we're creating a little ruffle on the top. Can you see how the ruffle is coming into play? So although we don't want to be too rough with it, we need to put some force into it a little bit and it doesn't matter if the tissue paper is a little it becomes a little bit creased that doesn't matter and that's going to give you my flower shape so that would be the right way side right end so just to finish off I'm just going to take the remainder of my thread and I'm just going to sew this in place now the tissue paper is a little bit thicker So that's just to keep it in place. You could always glue that bit together if you didn't want to sew it. And I'm just going to finish off on the end here. You don't want to keep taking the needle through the same piece of tissue otherwise you'll make a hole. Take this away. And you have your first element of your um, tissue flower. Okay, so what I want to do is, I have the element. I don't want to do anything with this just yet because I want to make my little flower. So the technique for making the flower out of material is exactly the same. Um, you just take your material, but this time I'm just going to fold it. And I'm just going to take it on itself so I don't have to make the cuts all the way down. I can just make... A 
nice heart shaped cut. So that just saves me some time. Can you see? And then take your, again, take your needle and thread. And you want to make sure that your needle and thread, you have enough in there, but mine's a little bit short, but let's see how we get on. And start making little pleats as I go along. But I think if you're making it for the first time, it might be a good idea just to <coughs> ensure you have enough thread to take it through. In gift wrapping, it's, all, it's always a good idea to experiment and try different materials. On our uh, live gift wrapping courses, we have um, we always look at ways of how we can recycle boxes, how we can use the the card to make some embellishments um, for the gifts, how to use some leftover materials. So the, these sort of techniques are very popular on our live gift wrapping courses. Um, and if you do want to look into the courses, just take a look at giftwrappingcourses.co.uk forward slash classes okay so right come to the end of this now and now what I want to do is just make my little folds so I want to take this across so it gives the flower shape so let me just I think I'm going to make this a little bit tighter just here. Be careful not to break your thread because if you break your thread you're going to have to do it all again. Start from the beginning. So just take my little through. So what you need to do at this stage is you want to bring these two pieces together. So you're going to need to bring them across like so and again just like we did with the tissue I'm just going to sew these two pieces together so I'm going everywhere. like with any creative craft it is just about just doing it and just trying it and experimenting and it's amazing how sometimes your Things that you're experimenting with are the ones that are the best things that come into play. Right, so just on the last stitch here. Again, finish off. And again, this is a perfect way to use leftover materials um, for, you know, you could make, if you, if you wanted to, you could actually create something from this. You could make a little brooch or, you know, something for your hand. Um, now, just one more thing that I have to do. So this is the, the back end of my flower and as you can see there's a little bit of a hole there because the material is quite thick so I can only take it through so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it together and I'm just going to make a few little tacks, just tack it in a few places just so that it holds it together a little bit better. And that just closes it up a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, before I double side this down, I'm just going to take my tissue paper and just start to bring 
the ruffles off. Just be careful of where you make the stitch. I just want to try and separate as many pieces as I can. So already you can see nice and full. This is, you know, you, it's amazing what you can use um, with just very simple materials, what you can create, should I say. This is lovely because you can actually use this for weddings, as decorations, to hang from ceilings. Um, in gift wrapping, in, in, in anything, but I want to just add this as a, as a flower to um, our bottle wrap that we're doing. Now that, that is beautiful in itself and imagine using that as a, as a, a topper on a gift. So what I want to do is obviously I want to add our material, little material flower in. And the reason I ruffled it in, in, before I put the flower in is because I wanted to ensure that we had it was easier for me to do. So I take some double sided tape and you can sew this on but I'm just going to take this down. It's quite firm so it will stick to the paper. It's in the centre here. And then just take your flower and just stick that on. And you have a beautiful, beautiful embellishment for your gifts and for our bottle wrap. So let's bring over this beautiful sleeve that Jenny has created and sewn. And I have some bottle green, green ribbon which is going to highlight the green ribbon on the top as well. So it brings everything together. Okay, so that's all taped down and what I want to do now is I want to take my ribbon and the ribbon is the same bottle green ribbon that Jenny has sewn onto the top of the bottle, the wrapped bottle sleeve. And I'm just going to just fold that in half and just find the centre. I'm just going to take my needle and thread and just make a little stitch. And then I'm going to actually sew the the plume, the the tissue and material flower on top. So I'm only catching just a little bit of the tissue. And I'm just going to take it back on itself just to give, make sure that it's nice and secure. And you can put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back just to keep it secure. And give it more stability and that's all it is just one stitch secure that stitch And so you have your, um, your embellishment now all ready to go onto your bottle wrap. So take your bottle and what I've done is I've just placed it into the sleeve and I'm just going to just hold around the neck of the bottle. Take my embellishment. So take your ribbon to the back and then bring it back forward again. And again, in gift wrap, it's always important just to make a nice cut for your ribbon. Okay. 
And what I want to do, we have quite a, a tall plume here. I just want to just gently bring the material down. So the ribbon should be tight, but some leeway. Hence why we left it quite long on the top. Because we want to give it a nice ruffled effect. And just keep bringing your material down. And that's your wrapped bottle sleeve. That was so good. <laughs> oh no, it was, it was brilliant. Neil and really took me out of my comfort zone. Like, who'd have thought that I could take sewing techniques and put them into wrapping? Who'd have thought it? But so much fun. Thank you, Neil.